Welcome back. Today I'm continuing the process of converting my 1981 DeLorean into an electric vehicle. And on today's episode, I'm continuing where I left off last time, flipping that switch into the on position for the very first time after a huge rewire job. To catch you up quickly, I'm taking everything out of a 2019 Chevy Bolt EV, the electric motor, the batteries, the electronics, everything, and swapping it into the DeLorean. This is Project Lightning. Let's go ahead and flip that switch and see what happens. Hey, so this is literally the very first time I'm going to hit the switch. Um, and I've got my fingers crossed that nothing catches on fire. Uh, I've got a fire extinguisher here, <laughs> just in case. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna need that. Um, everything is hooked up. I've double checked everything. Um, that doesn't mean I haven't missed anything, but yeah. Um, so I'm very nervous. <laughs> um, I'm hoping at least, I'm hoping at least the screen comes on. Okay, I got a screen, uh, the instrument cluster. I heard some pumps and things going. I heard some relays clicking. That's great. You gotta do the sniff test. I didn't see or hear anything troubling. So let me go ahead. I'm just gonna hit the button um, without hitting the brake pedal. No remote detected. Okay, I forgot the remote. <laughs> hey, this screen over here, I was able to hit the power button and it came on. Um, I don't know if I have audio though. I definitely have audio coming out of this speaker. I'm gonna turn it off. Uh, I didn't hear anything coming out of that speaker. This is kind of amazing. Um, this didn't come on. Oh, I should have blinkers and stuff. Or maybe not blinkers, but hazards. Oh yeah, both blinkers in the back. Both blinkers in the front. Okay, I need to go get the key. <laughs> Got my, uh, my little key here. I've got my key fob. I'm gonna go and hit the button now. It says press brake to start. Uh, yeah, Bluetooth device didn't come on. Parking brake, press park to start. High voltage uh, service, high voltage charging system. Uh, okay. I mean, so far, like everything is working. The fact that this is working is fantastic. So I'm gonna hold the brake now and hit the start button. I have initializing weight to shift. I heard a contactor click. I see a transmission, safety restraint system. Service vehicle soon, parking brake, stability track, steering assist is reduced, <laughs> pedestrian friendly alert. This came on. The lights came on here. That means the CAN bus is working. I'm, I'm just gonna do it. I'm just gonna full send. Um, my wheels are up on things here, but I'm gonna hold the brake. And by the way, I, I have brake assist now, so that's great. Put it into drive. Conditions not correct for shift. Okay, so. I kind of expected that. I'm actually very surprised that I've even gotten this far. This is fantastic. Uh, the car's on now, so I should have blinkers. Okay, I got a blinker in the front. I got a blinker in the back. The right side is working as well. I should have high beams. I do. Oh, do these buttons work here? That works. I can't test cruise control. Um, these buttons all work. 
Oh, yes. Okay, great. So that's all good. Um, let me try doing into neutral. Okay, so uh, it shifted into neutral just fine. Park worked. Hazards work. Okay, great. All right, so, uh, every, well, not everything. Things are turning on. Um, I think for right now, I am going to say that's good. I need to break out my OBD2 scanner and see why uh, the conditions are not correct for shift. I'm working on uh, diagnosing the issue uh, or issues, and I see a bunch of things about uh, you know, airbag deployment loops and things like that. And so then I went to look at the inflatable restraint module. Whoops. <laughs> Forgot to plug this uh, uh, bag full of sensors in. <laughs> Whoopsie. Let me get that one. Okay, so I was looking in my diagnostic logs and it said that the high voltage interlock loop was not working. Uh, so I went and I checked it and it only goes between a couple of different modules here. And the the one I was suspicious of is this here. So this is the, um, it's called the HPDM, um, which is the high power distribution module. In the documentation, they call it the T24 charger for some reason, but anyway, You'll see that there's a little white thing right there. So that's just a little jumper wire that I put on it. And I had moved it uh, over the last six months. And so I had to re-put that in and it was in the wrong spot. So basically it was not bridging the connection that it's supposed to, to sort of hotwire this because that uh, connector is not plugged in. Um, uh, speaking of which, like the connector's right here. <laughs> If I really wanted to, I could, I could take this off <laughs> and actually plug it in. But for right now, uh, that'll get us back to a good place. And so let's go take a look and see what happens now. I'm, that was the only message that I saw uh, that had me concerned. All right, I'm back in the car. I'm going to hold the brake down and hit the power button. Okay, oh, so that's new. Uh, okay, let's go check this really quick. I don't know if you can hear that, but the pump is running. That is the coolant. Uh, pump for the electrical system for the electronics. Uh, the one for the battery is not actually there. It's sitting right there, um, but I don't have that loop connected. So it was not doing this before. That is a good sign because it does that whenever the high voltage pack is enabled. So let me go ahead and hold the brake down and put it into drive. It did it. We're in drive. I'm gonna let off the brake. Let's see if I can get those wheels to spin. It's spinning. It's spinning. Well, that was easy. Let's see if we got reverse. Uh, I don't have a reverse camera. I didn't plug it in, so I'm gonna get a warning there. We're in reverse. Let's see if I've got reverse. I can't, I can't actually look up there to see, but we're in reverse. I don't know how this is possible. I, there was basically nothing I had to fix other than one plug that I didn't plug in and then one jumper wire I don't know how that's possible. Let's get this thing on the road. After the success of getting the car able to spin the wheels, I, I kind of got really motivated and I decided that I, I want to drive the car today. <laughs> so, uh, so I spent the last few hours, I buttoned everything up, uh, up here in the front. Um, I actually found that I had a little bit of a brake leak 
uh, on, not that line, one down there. I can't see it anyway. Uh, anyway, so I just tightened it up a little bit. I'm hoping that's good enough for the drive. Um, these things I've got like zip tied into place. These aren't the final locations uh, for these, but you know, I, I figured I'll zip time into place. I'm not gonna be doing any crazy acrobatics out there. So this can actually close now. Look at that. Then you can see through the windshield. I cleaned all of the glass everywhere. So it's nice and shiny so I can see out it. And I put the seats in so I can sit in the seats. I even put the seat belts in as well. So I can put the seat belt in, be nice and safe. Uh, I only have, oh, three things left on the list. Thing number one is that the instrument uh, cluster right here, I've got a 3D printed uh, mount for it, if I can show you there. Uh, but it doesn't put it at the right angle and it's not tall enough. So this is with the steering wheel as far down as it will go and it still kind of rides on it. Um, so I have a new one of these, actually the print just completed, um, that's about two inches taller, so a little bit taller and it has the angle changed. And I'm hoping that it's tall enough that I could put it in there and, and just not have to fuss with it. I'll probably do some additional prints on it to like fine tune it, but for right now, all is well. Uh, so that's item number one. Item number two is this. This is the closing plate. The closing plate lives under the car, under there. So that is the small battery pack up here in the front. And I need to put it there and put all those bolts in. So that's easy peasy. And then lastly, uh, so I uh, ran the cables for the antenna from the front of the car, uh, you know, like the, the main screen, all the way back here. <laughs> I've got it <laughs> just kind of flopping in the breeze. It's zip tied. Uh, it'll, it'll flop around a little bit, but that'll be okay. Uh, so third thing on the list before I can do this drive is I got to take the charger off. Oh, I did confirm it charges. I, I can't believe it. Here, let me do it real quick. Okay, well, don't mind me. There we go. You hear some contactors click. You hear some stuff happening. And if all goes well, the screen should turn on. Well, it didn't. Okay, well, maybe I didn't do something right there. Anyway, it was charging. Things are, things are good there. Did I just not turn this on? Yeah, no, that's on. Okay, well. Oh, well, the, the light's blinking. You see that blinking green light? That means that it is charging. So for whatever reason, the screen didn't come on. Uh, but it's because this is not close enough. Well, anyway, um, so it charges and yeah, so I need to move this though, because as I'm driving down the street, I really don't want this flopping around back here. Uh, luckily there's just like two or three plugs. Just take them all off and then, yeah. Okay, so that's the three things left on the list. Instrument cluster, closing plate, uh, disconnect the charger. I'll do those things and I'll be right back. Man, I really wonder why this screen isn't turning on. Here's the old one in the front and the new one in the back. Oh yeah, that's much better. It's still not perfect. It still drags on there with the cables and stuff a little bit, but you know, for, for the drive right now, at least it's out of the way. She's back on her own four wheels for the first time in six months. And it's time to do a little drive. on draggy is working it should mean that I'm able to get some zero to 60 times
zero six seconds. Six seconds. That's six seconds flat. Oh, that's fantastic. The car has been out of commission for about the last six months. It is so good to finally be able to drive it again. Well, if you made it this far in the video, I think that means you probably like the content. So please hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, write a comment. Anything that you can do really, really helps the YouTube algorithm. Well, I have a ton left to do before the car is really done. So I'm just gonna scroll down a long list right now of all of the things that I still need to do to the car. And if it seems like you wanna watch me do any of that kind of stuff, please go ahead and follow along and I'll see you next time. This is Project Lightning.